And now for more supply and demand curve analysis. Uh, this next question is uh, taken from Kruger and Wells, Microeconomics, Chapter 3, uh, Question 17. So use a diagram to illustrate how each of the following events affects equilibrium price and quantity of pizza. So part A is the price of mozzarella uh, rises. So this is an increase in the input price. Uh, and I drew the effect here. So uh, given before, you have once again price labeled on the vertical axis, quantity of pizzas labeled on the horizontal axis. Before we had a demand curve here, supply curve, the initial supply curve, with the initial equilibrium price at P1 and the in initial quantity here. Um, when the price of the, an input rises, uh, that's ref reflects, uh, it's going to be reflected by an inward shift in the supply curve uh, as suppliers are willing, at every given price, are willing to to supply a smaller quantity at this, uh, with this lower, with this increased input cost. So the inward shift in supply curve is now associated with this new equilibrium point right here. So you could call this E2. Uh, and associated with E2, we have higher prices uh, and lower quantity in this market. So at this new equilibrium, the quantity supplied and demand is less, uh, and it's supplied and demand at this higher price. Uh, moving on to part B. So the health hazards of hamburgers are widely publicized. Um, so hamburgers and pizza, you could think of as substitutes. So if for some reason the um, for some reason people wanted fewer hamburgers in this case because the health hazards of them were widely publicized, that implies that people are going to be shifting in towards the purchase of pizzas, so away from hamburgers and into pizzas because they are substitutes. So that shift toward the purchase of pizza is going to be reflected in our little demand and supply, you know, market framework by a shift in the demand curve. So our demand curve initially was this D1 um, with our supply curve, nothing's changing our supply curve. This is our old equilibrium point with price one and quantity Q sub zero. Uh, we have an outward shift in demand to D sub two. Uh, and so we have our new equilibrium up here. So this is point that I'm circling is E sub two. And associated with it, we have a new price that's higher uh, and a new quantity that's higher. So given this outward shift in the demand for pizzas, we have uh, a higher quantity demanded and supplied in this market at a lower, at a, at a higher price. Cool. Uh, so now moving on to the price of tomato sauce. The price of tomato sauce falls. Oh. Uh, the price of tomato sauce falls. So once Again, this well, this is a change in an input price for the supplier, so this is going to result in a shift in the supply curve. Um, because the input price has decreased, now suppliers are willing to increase uh, to suppliers are willing to supply a higher quantity at every given price. So that's going to be an outward shift in the supply curve. Uh, and then give me a moment, and I'll show you the full solution for our little market supply demand framework. Uh, finish this up. Um, we have a shout in the supply curve to this S2, so this outward shift, uh, and now we have our new equilibrium. Uh, our old equilibrium was up here with P1 and Q1, and now we have a new equilibrium. Um, so with this lower input cost, we now have a lower price in this market and a higher quantity supplied and demanded, and higher equilibrium quantity. Now moving on to the, having cleared everything up, and moving on to the next question, D. The income of consumers rise and pizza is an inferior good. Um, so what's the definition of inferior good? I think it was covered in this chapter. An inferior good, um, as income increases, uh, the demand for inferior goods decrease. I mean, like the classic example always in my mind is spam, you know, the fake meat that's kind of really cheap. Um, basically, if you have a... Uh, like I, I like to think of it as you have a low income, you're looking for the cheapest source of meat, and so spam kind of meets that. But as your income rises, you shift out of those kind of lower quality, yeah, inferior goods uh, up to higher quality goods. So by this logic, pizza being inferior good, we're just kind of given that as a fact. Um, and the incomes of consumers are rising, and therefore the demand of pizza is going to decrease because of this inferior good status. I'm not sure that's true, but okay, we'll take it at face value. So that's going to be reflected by a shift inward in the demand curve. Uh, give me a second, and I'm going to clean all of this up for you. 
Oh, okay, having shifted all, cleaned all this up for you, um, we have the inward shift in the demand curve. So our old equilibrium here with uh, P sub 1 and Q sub 1, we now shift to the new equilibrium uh, with the inward shifted uh, demand curve. Uh, is now associated with this price sub 2, this lower price, uh, and this lower quantity supplied and demand, this new lower uh, equilibrium quantity. Uh, and now moving on to the last problem. The last problem gives uh, E, consumers expect the price of pizza to fall next week. Um, so I think the logic they're giving here is that um, if you're kind of a normal, rational consumer and you expect the price of something to be lower tomorrow, then that's going to decrease your quantity. That's going to, at every single price, it's uh, possible it's going to decrease the quantity you're uh, you're willing to demand, um, because it, all you have to do is wait a week and you can get the lower price of pizza. So uh, both D and E, I think, have the same shift. So D1 shifts uh, in to this new demand curve that's shifted in, exactly like part D, uh, uh, resulting in this lower equilibrium price and this lower equilibrium quantity. Um, and that's it. Uh, hopefully this was all helpful, and have a good day. Bye.